So I'm just going to very quickly, in the interest of time, to try to catch up the agenda, uh, go over the core OSM architecture uh, at a high level and some of the, the, the themes and, and core tenets of the project. So I'd like to take a look at the architectural principles, um, the scope and the mapping to the Etienne FE standards and architectures that are published. Um, then I'm gonna go over the OSM architecture and finally um, what our goals uh, were architecturally for release four. So the core driving principles in every release of OSM are these four here where we want to have um, several layers of functionality. We'd like to keep all of the different pieces of functionality very modular um, and simple as well as abstracted. Um, that way as the project evolves we can snap in new modules, replace modules, um, different, different contributors can contribute different versions of modules um, and, and we keep the project completely agnostic, but everything still hangs together. And so when we get into the architecture, I'll explain to you how we achieve this. Um, when we look at the Etsy Mano specifications, um, it's very important in OSM that we align with these specifications and that we adhere to them in our implementation. And so we, we like to look at the, both the runtime scope and the design time scope when looking at these types of, when looking at adhering to this architecture. And so when you overlay the OSM components onto the, the Etsy Mano diagrams, you'll see, you'll see complete alignment there where we have the VNF configuration and abstraction layer as well as the resource orchestrator and the VIM SDN controller um, as well as a resource orchestrator in the, in the scope of OSM. This is a, a, a module called OpenVim. And we also have the GUI and design time tools. This is another module that's interchangeable. And we'll get into that a little later today when we go into the, the lightweight build of, of OSM in that we now because we have a standardized Sol 5 compliant northbound API, we can snap on any GUI that we like provided it just implements that API. And so the core OSM architecture, um, these are the various modules that comprise OSM. And so we have the DevOps module. So this is how we maintain our CI CD pipeline. Um, and this is how we automate our build, installs, and tests. This is still very much a work in progress and I wouldn't by any means say it's a completely robust suite of tests, but this is a considerable improvement from release one and release two. Now as of release four, we will have a complete sweat set of end-to-end -end tests that are automated that we can run on builds as often as we like. Um, the user interface module, um, as I mentioned, is now, it, it, it can be implemented in several ways as a UI. We also have a, the, the OSM client, which is a command line interface, as well as that, that Sol 5 compliant northbound API I mentioned. Uh, then we have the service orchestrator module. Um, this is where the, the catalog management, um, the, the VNF onboarding, and the, the network service description and, and um, modeling happens. And this is where this is maintained and executed. Finally, we have the resource orchestrator. This is how we interface with our infrastructure layer. So this is, these are the connectors to the VIM, the SDN, et cetera. And then we have our network service to VNF communication, or we call N2VC for short, and the VNF abstraction and uh, configuration and abstraction layer. In OSM, this is realized through using Juju. And so by leveraging the Juju engine and all the capabilities that that open source community already has and bringing that into OSM, we're able to do complete end-to-end -end lifecycle management of all of our VNFs just by leveraging some of the existing Juju capabilities or whatever Juju scripts people may have already composed. And then finally, we have our, mod our monitoring module. This is our newest module that's been added. Um, and in here is where we, we aggregate and build plugins into different monitoring and telemetry solutions so that we can pull um, telemetry not only from the infrastructure layer or from, from all the various VIMs and SDN components, but also um, leave the APIs open so that we can build plugins into the VNF um, layer as well. And we're, we're currently working on bridges to build um, that integration so that we can get application layer telemetry from that N2VC component 
directly into our monitoring module. So then we'll have that full stack view of telemetry from infrastructure to application to network service. So as I mentioned, we now have a new northbound a API. Uh, previously, in previous releases of OSEM, there were different APIs into different modules that were not necessarily aligned and consistent. And so as of release four, we've cleaned this up and consolidated everything into one master northbound API that is SOL5 compliant. So the release four highlights um, consistent themes that you'll see in all of our releases uh, are service assurance, usability, security, and resiliency, as well as improving our CI-CD pipeline. As, as um, Francisco Javier mentioned, the code base is getting larger and larger, and so doing complete regression tests at the end of each release is getting more and more cumbersome for the community to do. So it became very important for us to build the CI-CD pipeline, automate those tests so that we're not doing a complete manual regression test at the end of every release, but instead we're doing spot um, spot tests of each feature as they're added and each component as it's added and then a complete regression test that's totally automated at the very end. This is making it a lot easier for us to accelerate our development and add more features more quickly. Um, new things that are popping up in release four, um, this concept of ecosystem development and so we're trying to build catalogs of validated VNFs with published descriptors that are available to the public so that um, that, that job and that task of building those, those Yang models and those, those YAML files to create the onboarding scripts and, and packages is no longer that difficult. It's, what we're doing is we're building a library of pre-validated ones that can just be downloaded and used. We're also really shoring up the documentation. As with all open source communities, early stages of this project had suboptimal documentation. Um, now, now that the, we're coming up to release four, we really recognize the, the requirement to have valid and robust documentation that describes the entire platform, not only at the code level, but also at the, from the user perspective on how to use and operate the platform once it's deployed. Um, and finally, as of release four, we're introducing the capabilities for container-based VNF deployments with a Kubernetes integration. Now, for release four, this feature will currently be experimental, and it's not, it's not, um, it's not a, a completed end-to-end -end feature that will come in release five, but we do have certain capabilities for deploying VNFs that are container-based instead of just VMs. And so the information model versus data model, when we, when we mentioned this, this component SOL5 compliant, this is, this is Etsy Mano compliant, um, what we mean is that we, we are consuming the standards that are coming out of Etsy, where they are appropriate to this project, and implementing those standards uh, as are feasible. And so when you look at the information model, what, what we mean here is the Etsy NFE, the, the phase one MANO, and the phase two, uh, the IFA standards. So IFA 11, IFA 14. But then when you move down to the, the data models, um, when we actually look at the Yang models that build the descriptors for our VNFs and for our network services, those are data models. In, in the case of OSM, these are implemented in Yang. Um, but other data models, for example, are the models coming out of Oasis Tosca or heat templates that, that are currently being used uh, by ONAP and eventually um, moving toward the Etsy NFE SOL1 which is currently the holy grail of all data models, uh, and we're hoping that the community ratifies that, that uh, specification as soon as possible because everyone would love to adopt it. Um, it is currently the most, the most robust data model, and we at OSM are leaning toward adopting that as our de facto standard data model going forward. And so if you'd like to keep up with the community or, or follow, a, a follow what's happening or join the community, as Francisco Javier mentioned, go to osm.etsy.org or join our Slack, ch Slack channel to chat with any of any members of the steering committee, the end user advisory group, or people that are actively developing code. Thank you. <laughs>